This is a talk about civic engagement. And uh, civic engagement, we like to talk about reaching out to not the usual suspects and going to the margins and trying to get those people involved. But what about the usual suspects who are just overlooked? And they're always there, but we just don't listen to them. And so when we had our National Day of Civic Hacking event in Portland, uh, we try to reach out to some of these people too. And I met a lot of them over the past few years. There's Lisa from the bus stop. There's my friend Wanda, who made us Puerto Rican chicken for our benefit dinner to, for Puerto Rico. And, uh, and then there's Mark. And I want to talk about Mark. So we had the challenge laid down when Erie got us in the GovTech article and talking about how we're supposed to be trying to be more inclusive. And so we're like, uh-oh, we got we to gotta try to step up and actually live up to it. So when I'm hanging the banner for our event, uh, this is when we actually meet the people that, not the people that we invited, but the people that just are going to show up, right? So on the street, this guy comes up to me, Mark, and he introduces himself. And I noticed that before the event, even though we haven't invited people, there's this spirit of like civic innovation. And people have been dropping these random anonymous notes about their ideas for like the city. And I'm like, this is a good sign. We're, we're going to have an inclusive event. And I don't quite understand that person's idea, but I like how they're thinking. And uh, so Mark, actually, I met him the day before, and he came to our event, and uh, I gave him a t-shirt. And uh, we're doing our three-word introductions, going around the circle, and everybody gets, and then it gets to Mark, and everybody gives their three words, and it gets to Mark, and he says, people are dying. We got to do something. People are dying on the street, and we got to do something about it, and I'm Mark, and, and he goes for like two minutes before I have to stop him. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And anyway, we figure out he wants to do something about traffic safety. And so I try to hook him up with there's another project with making maps of people's maps, like your subjective map of our city. And so I get him to identify the dangerous intersections. And um, we worked with him. And then I sort of became friends with Mark. And uh, we decided that we're going to do a project on a public service announcement for traffic safety. So I invited him to my coffee shop. And um, the thing is, after I gave Mark my number, he kind of wouldn't stop calling me. The next day after the event, I was trying to like relax, and he just calls me. He's like, Nick, there's more work to do. And I get kind of excited, because he's like a civic engagement dream. And so my ego's getting a little big, and I sort of feel like Tom Cruise and Rain Man. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to be a star. And I'm a big civic designer, and I'm going to help everybody, and Mark's going to be my poster boy. Um, and I'm like, then I'm like, you know, is this, this feels wrong. I don't know about this. And at that point, Mark had just like, called me for the 15th time, and he invited me to his birthday party. And I was about to go to his birthday party. He wanted to go to the pizza place, and then the bar, and then the other pizza place, and then the club, and then the other pizza place for the third time. And I didn't know if anyone was going to show up. And I was about to go, and I was just like, you know, this is going to be crazy. I think I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting carried away. But the truth is that it wasn't about me at all. Mark had a plan for me when he introduced himself. And you know, he's a, he's a usual suspect. He goes to city council meetings, and he sits in the front row, and he always gives a talk. And so when I got to the party, it wasn't just me and my carried away idea. Like, Mark was there. And actually, all these other fans of Mark were there, too. I didn't know if anyone else would be there, but I actually started to meet everyone else that had met Mark uh, randomly. And they were kind of like me. <laughs> there were people that were kind of like me, like this guy Travis from the pizza place. and. Um, I was like, oh, I see how it is. This is Mark is bringing me onto his team. And, um, and so I, w I was humbled a little bit. And then we had the best day. We were walking around Mark's birthday, and uh, everyone's honking and saying hello. And I, did I mention that Mark's actually a crossing guard? So this whole idea about traffic safety is like, from his experience, he's a pro. Um, and so, yeah, but he's kind of a VIP, so he, we got the VIP treatment when we were walking around. Everybody, everybody loved him, um, and uh, yeah, it was a great day. But um, anyway, so actually, you know, he, was, he was, had a plan all along for me, and he wanted to get me my attention and get me to give you this message. Hey, 
Mark, you, you said, you asked me if I could play some music. So what music do you want to hear? Uh, I want Tina Turner. But the lady said, yeah, what love's got to do with it? All right, this is Tina Turner. What, what's love got to do with it? And thanks for listening. And I'll see you back home, Mark, and we'll keep working. All right, see you, Mark. Love you, buddy. Later.